Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hey, AC. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. And today we are going to be going over a, a Gene Toomer poem, and uh, that is called Cotton Song. Uh, it is, uh, Toomer was a, a prominent figure in the Harlem Renaissance, uh, along with uh, writers such as Claude McKay, County Cullen, Langston Hughes, Zora Neale Hurston, and so many more. We, we went over uh, The Harlem Dancer by McKay. Uh, we went over several Langston mm -hmm. Hughes. Yeah, such a great. Yes, yeah, it was. Such a great. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that'll be yeah. good. Mm -hmm. But with the Cotton Song, the discussion starter for this is, what do you believe is the mentality of the speaker in this poem? Assuming his circumstance, do you believe the speaker is fighting for a losing cause? Hmm. Interesting. A losing cause. What do you mean by that? It depends. The fact that he has allegedly, one could say that he's uh, given up on waiting for the call. It's as it says in the poem. Judgment Day? Yeah, given up on uh, not hmm. waiting for Judgment Day. I don't uh, see. I, I took it a little, I don't know, a little differently. It's I wouldn't say giving up on anything. I took it as a, you know, go do things. Stop waiting around for, you know, the end. I and again, I could, I could, I found it a little difficult to read because of you know certain. Uh, tea. It, it goes ebonic. On your T, yes, mm -hmm. and I'm not very good with if if it's written in an accent or anything like that. I d yeah, as soon no. as it goes like phonetic, I'm like, nope, mm -hmm. can't do the this. The brain just shuts um, down. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I, I, I need proper as, English. So. <laughs> but uh, so I mean, that's just how I took it. I saw it as like it as soon as you kind of connected it with like what type of person would be saying this and thinking about like they're on a cotton farm and those are probably slaves who this is the the song to keep themselves in pace for being able to keep work moving. Um, and it, it's more hopeful than it is like mm. um, giving up on salvation. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. like where, that's the first thing that kind of jumped into my head was like this, maybe it wasn't written at that point in time, but like that's exactly what it was evocative of, yeah. of that sensation of, you know, stay a cog in the wheel because someday you are you will be able to be break, broken free from that machine. I think of one word, and I, I very much agree with Tori about, uh, that's the, the background because I, this is a poem about slaves on a cotton mm. farm, but the one word I think about is purgatory. I think yeah, that's a good one. Because to me, purgatory is very, I think of uh, the uh, Joshua and the Wall and the Promised Land. Probably my initial impression is the, uh, the Veggie Tales video, <laughs> as, funny, as funny as it may sound. But uh, oh still very, uh, it's still very uh, helpful in mm -hmm. creating an image in my mind. Yeah. But I think that with this, uh, doing the best that you possibly can and uh, being a, a good, uh, hardworking person, uh, despite the cruel, unrewarding circumstances that there are, uh, this is the time to make an impression uh, so that come Judgment Day, uh, you... Uh, in a way, uh, I'm going to speak in more business terms. Uh, God sees a better resume. Mm -hmm. for, uh, That's a good way of putting it. For this uh, individual who's uh, not waiting to do the hard work. Uh, and from a more upon, yeah historically, like literal, like yeah the the um, mm -hmm. the North coming to like liberate you know, yeah. from from wherever. Because you are. I mean, there there is room for worship, but. Mm -hmm. uh, your actions uh, and what you do in your life and being a good person mm -hmm. is what speaks mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah. the greatest of wonders because somebody can uh, attend a church and that's their claim to uh, salvation. Uh, is it really a claim to salvation? So. Mm -hmm. Casey? I have nothing more to say. <laughs> that's the only thing. I mean, when I first read it, my first question was, why is it called Cotton Song? And that's when I realized this. Either 
this person was or is a slave and they sing songs in the cotton field so he decided to write his own mm -hmm. um back and why he called it cotton song to say this is yeah. a song you would sing while you're picking cotton um what it means my first thought was just um the rapture mm -hmm. that was um <clears throat> um instead of waiting for the rapture to set us free just keep going mm -hmm. i agree with that methodology i yeah. think that one should definitely keep going because uh life is meant to life is meant to live and make Be forward lived. progress mm -hmm. that's kind uh, of right but like don't sit around waiting for yeah no absolutely yeah, yeah. 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 that's i think a, a good portion I of got it full that circle added, yeah. <laughs> yeah we come full circle with that one do we have any final thoughts no i think it's a pretty simple poem and it does it what it mm. sets out to do yeah i would agree well. with that much uh, and uh Casey's got a pretty good, uh, he's, his, he's got a good fan uh, that's helped me uh, familiarize myself with some uh, great composers. It was warm in here earlier. It's getting cooler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, was, it was a little close in here. Yeah, yeah, I remember back, I remember music class uh, back in elementary school where uh, my uh, music teacher was very passionate and she would incorporate uh, each each week or nothing no each month she would have uh, a different composer that we would go over uh, and we would go over their music and uh, she would uh, tell us uh, she would show us on the globe where they came from because there was no powerpoint back then uh, you kids today with your powerpoints so, uh, with powerpoints in your cahoots mm. back in my day but we had if books. you're if you're interested in reading <laughs> Cotton Song by Jim Toomer, here is an anthology that was edited by Dudley Randall. And here is a website with it on it. Mm. <laughs> was it the link that <laughs> I sent to you? Uh, Poets.org? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Sure. This poem Whatever the case the may be, yeah, it, it, it does come up rather quickly, and it's a very easy find, and it's a very easy read. This has everything that has the uh, folk seculars, uh, spirituals, uh, and it starts with uh, those from way back when, uh, Phyllis Wheatley, uh, you have Paul Ernst Dunbar, who's a pioneer of uh, poetry uh, written by. Uh, I think it does writers. a good job uh, mimicking yeah. like the old, like what you would hear mm -hmm. if you were like way yeah. back when. This was, re this was released in 19... Giving me years from the late '60s. That sounds about right. So for the the so, yeah. Harlem Renaissance. But this is Harlem Renaissance was a little bit earlier, but this will collect itself. Fair enough. Bye. Gotcha. Thank you for tuning in to this discussion of literary gladiators. I hope you join us back again next time. Uh, if you're very interested, I hope that you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really believe in us, I encourage you to support us on Patreon. So we for now, it. <laughs> and as always, I encourage you to keep reading.